Welcome to the Rural Woman Podcast, a platform for women in agriculture, ranching, homesteading, and more to share their stories. I'm your host, Caitlin Dubin. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Rural Woman Podcast. This week's episode is brought to you by Shyla's Crochet Creations, handcrafted by Shyla Richards, an ocean loving East Coaster that moved west and now has a farm in Onaway, Alberta. Shyla crochets a variety of items like hats, mittens, scarves, and some super cute farm animals, plus, is able to do custom orders as well. Head on over to Etsy and find Shyla's Crochet Creations or simply take a look in today's show notes where the link is posted to check out all of her beautiful creations. Plus, listeners of the Rural Woman podcast can save 15% off of their order by using promo code RWP15. That's RWP15. So head on over and check out Shyla's Crochet Creations. On today's episode of the Rural Woman Podcast, you'll hear from a familiar farmer, Kelsey Jorison Olison. Kelsey was previously on the Rural Woman Podcast talking all about her farm, the Green Willow Homestead. You can head back to episode seven to hear her full farming story. Kelsey is a first-generation female farmer from southeastern Wisconsin. She is also a published author, fellow podcaster, a chicken tender, and a crunchy earth mama. But today we're talking about something a little different that I think you are all going to find super useful on your farm, ranch, or homestead, and that's marketing. It's something that I know can be a struggle for some people, including myself. So I'm excited to share Kelsey's interview with you all so we can absorb some of the knowledge just a little bit. Even if we got a little bit of knowledge from Kelsey today, that's going to do wonders for you and your farm. But before we get to today's episode, let's go over the review of the week. This week's review is titled TheBomb.com, and this five-star rating and review is from A. Bankson 87 from Apple Podcasts, and it says, I freaking love this podcast. It's so refreshing to find an egg podcast that's young and fresh and different. I love pushing play and listening while I do my chores. Everything is so real, and I feel like I could hang out with everyone on this show and have a great time. Thanks again from an Iowa sheep farmer who just happens to be a female. Well, thank you so much for your kind words and your great rating over on Apple Podcasts. If you guys would be so kind to leave me a review on Apple, that would be wonderful. But I've also been thinking for those listeners who don't have an Apple product and don't have an iTunes account, where can you leave a rating and review that I will see? So I'm thinking... If you don't have an Apple product and you want to leave a review, though it does not help the algorithm, I always enjoy reading your kind words. So if you want to head to the notes for this episode, the show notes over on wildrosefarmer.com, or you can head on over to my Facebook page and leave me a rating and review on Facebook. I will see all of those and those will be included in an upcoming show. So Again, thank you guys so much for your kind words. It really means so much to me getting these reviews every week. And you guys know I get really misty. But like A. Bankson87 said that she wants to hang out with everyone. Well, I too would like to hang out with everyone. And though we can't hang out in real life all of the time, we can hang out together over on the Rural Woman Podcast Community Facebook page. So it's a place where we can come together to support and encourage each other online and build community together. So head on over to Facebook and check out the Rural Women Podcast community. And without further ado, my friends, let's get to Kelsey's interview. Hello, Kelsey. How are you? I'm good, Caitlin. How are you? I'm doing so good. Welcome back to the Rural Woman Podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited. For the listeners who don't quite remember who Kelsey Jorison is, well, Kelsey Jorison now has a longer last name since the last time she's been on the Rural Woman (laughs) Podcast. There's been some changes in your life, Kelsey. Yeah, we got married back in June. So now I have two very Norwegian names, Kelsey Jorison Olesen. So... Very yes. good. A, a beautiful wedding. It was beautiful. Oh, thanks. And since that time, we've actually met face to face. 
I know, which was so much fun. We, you guys were able to come and hang out at my parents' cabin, which is where we got married. So yes. yeah, it was a blast. It was so wonderful being able to meet you guys in person. I loved yes. that weekend. It was so good. So good. So for the listeners who may not remember you or may not know who you are, give us a little brief overview of who you are and where you're from. Absolutely. So my name is Kelsey Jorson Olison, and I am a first generation female farmer. We have a small five acre farm in southeastern Wisconsin where we raise pastured chicken and we do pastured eggs. We also grow popcorn. We do maple syrup a variety of produce, all of which we sell at our roadside farm stand. And our farm stand opened up two years ago, and we've been just met with the most amazing success. It's been such a wonderful experience, which has led me to share how we do all of our marketing for our farm, because I want to share all the awesomeness with other farmers so they can be met with the same level of success. And that's why we're here today. Yes, I'm so excited. (laughs) I was telling Paul this morning, I was like, you know, this is the part of my story that nobody ever asks about. Because like when people ask about the homesteading or the chickens or the farm, like nobody wants to hear about our e-commerce business or how I learned how to use online marketing. So I'm just really excited to like share this part of my life with you and your listeners. Yes, it is so good. And for the listeners who want to know more about your homestead and your farmstead and all of the good things, they can go back to episode number seven of the Rural Woman Podcast. You were one of the initial first ladies on the show and I loved our episode. So people can learn more about you and your farmstead there. But today we're focusing on the marketing part of your homestead. So how did you start with learning and using online marketing? Well, back in 2013, my now husband, Paul, and I, we had just started dating. And he was super unhappy in his nine to five. And I was reaching the end of my love affair with acting and filmmaking, which was what I was doing before we started farming. I had been doing the starving artist thing in Chicago for about seven years, mind you. And all the while, of course, I had been dreaming of starting a garden and getting my first flock of chickens. I was definitely in that place where you know and you can like see and feel what the next chapter of your life is, but you just had no idea how to get there. So Paul, he found this book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, and he loved it. And he begged me to read it, so I did. <laughs> And I'll be frank, I was really skeptical at first. I mean, the title, it's like, what, four hours of work every week to make a living? There's no way that's possible. But Tim, the author, he wrote about his experience creating an e-commerce business where after he created a handful of products, he sold them exclusively online and used the avenues of online marketing to drive website traffic and ultimately drive customers. So the book, it was published in 2007, and a lot has changed since then in the online marketing world. But I really feel the tenets of what Tim was teaching, it it intrigued Paul and I. You can create a product once and sell it forever. You create automated systems like having an online shopping cart and a fulfillment center handle all your shipping, and you ultimately make money passively. So Paul and I, we put our heads together and we thought about what skills the two of us could combine to create a digital or physical product to sell. And Paul, he has always been extremely engineering inclined. I mean, the resume he used to land his first engineering job, he brought the racing motorcycle he designed and built with his own two hands. (laughs) And there's me, on the other hand, who's like the opposite side of the brain. I'm all creativity and design. I love big picture thinking. Okay, so are you ready for the super random product we came up with, Caitlin? Yes. (laughs) Okay, Okay. so we realized we could create video manuals and publish books for dirt bike riders that want to rebuild their engines themselves. And I know it's like, we're like talking, (laughs) this is so random, because this is like a rural woman farming podcast, and here we are talking about the dirt bike engine products we built. But anyway... We did a bit of market research by surveying potential customers to see if this is something that they would find valuable, and we were met with a resounding yes. So Paul and I quit our jobs, we moved into his parents' basement, and we started an e-commerce business together. (laughs) You're not (laughs) kidding when you say it's super random to be talking about dirt bikes on the Rural Woman Podcast. (laughs) I know. It's like, what? 
<laughs> but this is my journey. Here I right? am. And I just find it so interesting. And I want to know the statistics behind how many people live in their parents' basements while they run their e-commerce business and are like secret millionaires, because I'm sure there's a few of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, right. I would like to think there is. <laughs> If you've been listening to the Real Woman podcast, then you've heard me talk all about my favorite natural deodorant from KL Skin Naturals. But did you know that they're more than just a deodorant company? My friend Leah has amazing foot butters, yummy lip balms, dreamy skin creams, and has recently introduced brand new handmade soaps into the mix. Clean and simple, these handmade bars of soap lather richly and leave skin feeling super soft. Pure kaolin clay and activated charcoal gently cleanse away toxins and the rustic hand-cut bars are long-lasting and smell amazing. So head on over to klskindeodorant.com and use promo code WILDROSE10 to save 10% off your next order. So Kelsey, tell me what skills you had to learn in order to start your business. I know that you do photography and filmmaking was in your background, but what were the skills that you didn't have that you worked on learning? Well, first, I taught myself how to build our website. I had never built a website before. And, you know, I just Googled it. I read a bazillion reviews on what hosting sites were available, which ones were great. And at the time, there was Wix, WordPress, and Weebly, which is crazy to think now because there's like so many website building hosts out there. And truly, I learned how to build websites on all three platforms because I wanted to be sure. I wanted to know what would work best for us, what type of website could actually grow with us as our business grew. And Weebly ended up winning hands down for ease of use and affordability. And I still love Weebly and have built dozens of websites for others using this hosting platform. Um, Another skill that I had to jump into that was really scary at first was Facebook ads. Our first year, we had made about 5,000 in net profit. So I knew we had to ramp things up. (laughs) Things weren't going to work at 5K. (laughs) So (laughs) I had to put our, I had just put up our Facebook page and I knew that Facebook was beginning to lean more towards the pay to play mentality, which, you know, all these entrepreneurs were complaining about and entrepreneurs still complain about like, you know, Facebook only, you know, your page only gets 5% organic reach. It's really unfair. But instead of joining the herds attitude, I thought, why not just give Facebook a chance and actually pay to play? So I started experimenting with Facebook ads for e-commerce business and my photography business. I tested all different types of ads, audiences, different types of ad copy. And while I made a ton of mistakes, it paid off immensely. Now, you know, I tell people our ROI with Facebook is 600% and they don't believe me. And there's so many business owners out there and farmers, they underestimate the power of Facebook. And I'll talk more about this later, but seriously, Facebook has been huge for all of our businesses. Another skill I learned was email marketing. Now, back in 2013, this wasn't the buzzword that you hear so often today. There were only a handful of options available to us. So we did Infusionsoft first, which was awful. And then I promptly had to switch all of our subscribers and automations over to Aweber, which then became really expensive and not being all that technically advanced. So I decided to transition again to ConvertKit. And honestly, Caitlin, I like talking about this. I think half the battle with online marketing is learning and knowing which platforms are actually useful and (laughs) user-friendly. It can be so frustrating. So Anyway, taught myself how to build what's called email sales funnels, where you onboard a subscriber through your emails and you funnel them into ultimately making a purchase. So I taught myself how to set these emails up automatically so it would do it in our sleep. And once I got the hang of email marketing, it became one of my absolute favorite tools to use across all of our businesses. From there, Paul wrote blogs. I photographed our books. He wrote our video scripts. I designed our graphics. You know, the list... It goes on and on. Uh, We learned so much that first year, but the most important thing I learned was how powerful online marketing was when you had the right tools and knowledge. Absolutely. So then would you say that most of your knowledge was earned through trial and error or what were some other resources that you drew from to learn about online marketing in the first place? Well, it's definitely a combination of both. 
Like our first three years, I read every book I could get my hands on, anything to do with Google AdWords, Facebook marketing, you know, the art of propaganda, those like tenants with like sales copy book writing, all of that stuff. I listened to hundreds of podcasts too. Uh, I, I loved Amy Porterfield's Online Marketing Made Easy. That was a really great resource for me when I first got started. Once I went on a road trip to visit a friend in Utah and I binged over 30 of her episodes on the drive. <laughs> Um, I just became this sponge, you know, and and then I started experimenting and testing all these ideas on our niche audience, these dirt bike riders. And our first year, like I said, we net the 5k, but truly it, it felt like such a big win back then. It felt like we were doing something right. But the benefits of starting this e-commerce business didn't stop there. So I mentioned, you know, I was working as a photographer at the time. I still do. And I've worked now for 12 years as a portrait photographer. So at the time we launched our e-commerce business, I was probably making like $20,000 extra a year with that. So using the skills and knowledge I was gaining from researching online marketing for the e-commerce business, I used that on my photography business. And I ended up doubling my photography income to $40,000 in one year. It was incredible. Then in 2015, uh, right before publishing our second book for the e-commerce business, Paul ended up getting a job offer to work for an aviation company. And we knew that if we wanted a piece of land to have a garden, try our hand at homesteading and chickens, one of us was going to have to get a full-time job so we could qualify for a mortgage. So he took the job. We started searching for our property. And then in January of 2016, we closed on this place now that we call home. I cannot believe you doubled your income in one year. That is insane. (laughs) And you know what's crazy is at the time, like when you're just in the trenches and like trying this stuff out and testing it out and doing Facebook ads and writing blogs, it just, you don't realize, like you don't realize until you turn around and look back. And like, honestly, the last year and a half is when I've realized, oh my gosh, like I actually do, I I really do know what I'm doing. (laughs) You know? That light bulb just went (laughs) off for you. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. So is your e-commerce business still going then? Yes, it is. So we sell our books and videos through our website and on Amazon. So nearly everything is passive at this point. And I honestly do spend less than four hours a week working on this business. And we make on average four to $6,000 a month on the side from that first e-commerce business. All from those dirt bike riders. I know, man. They're they are such a loyal group of people. Like they really are a close knit, like eager and wonderful audience to work with. That's awesome. So I know you mentioned you have two e-commerce businesses. Can you tell me a little bit more about the second one? And I definitely want to know how this all ties in with helping getting your farm off the ground too. Yeah, yeah. So the second one is the one that I'm sure all your listeners are more familiar with, which is Green Willow Homestead. It started out as an e-commerce business. So I used everything we learned launching our first business and applied it to what we were doing on the homestead before it became a full-blown farm. Uh, We created a handful of digital products, one being the mobile chicken tractor build plans. That's been by far one of our most popular products. It's a downloadable PDF that shares the step-by-step of how we built our A-frame chicken tractors. It includes a materials list, step-by-step, pictures, everything you could need. And then the second digital product is the one you know all about, the Holistic Home eBook. And that's where I combine everything I'd learned about holistic and sustainable living. And then I organized it room by room in your own home. So it teaches you slowly and you can incorporate things slowly and you get to go at your own pace. Uh, So I used the same strategy. I developed for our first e-commerce business and my photography business on Greenwell Homestead. And I, I want to say a quick thing about e-commerce businesses and passive income because it's definitely not passive when you first start out. There is so much legwork to get it up and running. And, you know, for me, that looked like homesteading my little butt off, learning what worked, what didn't, then sharing all of our losses and then our big wins openly in blog posts, you know, on Facebook and Instagram, it's really vulnerable. And don't get me wrong. I I love being with their hens. I love being in my garden. I love writing and designing graphics. I truly love all of it, but it is a ton of work. And I think that's where the passive income conversation gets it wrong. You really do have to be 100% in love with what you're going to be doing with your e-commerce business. Otherwise, it feels like a nine to five, except worse because it's more work ultimately in the end. <laughs> For sure. Like 
like what you said, it's hours and hours extra work on top of what you're already doing. So yes. yeah, it definitely does not feel passive when you start out with anything online. Yeah, for sure. So now tell me how all of this leads to the launch of your farm. Yeah, absolutely. So after homesteading for about two years, I was completely hooked. I kept scaling up and growing more and more food, more food that we could eat or give away to friends. And all the while, I was just reading and reading about climate change and our food's carbon footprint and how small farms are a part of the answer in bringing communities back together and healing the environment. So I felt deeply called to step from homesteader to farmer and start feeding my community officially. So I went to work creating a sales and marketing plan using the skills and knowledge I'd gained from marketing our first business, my photography business, and our second business. I'm talking content calendars, blogs, localized Facebook and Instagram ads, email lists, the whole thing. So while I was implementing all of this and getting it started right before I was about to open the doors for the farm stand, our first e-commerce business had a $12,000 month in sales. Paul and I looked at each other. We just like had tears in our eyes. It was so validating to finally see results like this after years of hard work. And then I launched the farm stand and was completely blown out of the water. Within a few months, we had 150 regular customers. These are the type of people who would buy anything I grew or raised, and then they'd tell all their friends about it. At the time, I'd spent about $100 on Facebook ads, and that was just to simply raise awareness about our farm stand. It wasn't like sending them to a product page. It wasn't getting them to buy anything online. It was just awareness. And then in our first month, I made $4,000 in sales. We ended up hitting our supply ceiling our first year, and then this year, we doubled our pastured egg operation, and we've hit our supply ceiling again. So it just rattled me awake. It, it made me realize something super important. You don't have to have a degree. You don't need to be a certified expert to be successful with marketing. It was just like the permission, you know, to be awesome at it without having to have those credentials. And I realized I had developed a very specific strategy and that strategy worked. I had replicated this strategy across multiple types of businesses and it was getting to the point where I just couldn't chalk it up to luck anymore. For sure. And Obviously, all of the back work that went into this and the Googling and the hours and hours of research that you did, you know, I don't think you can learn that in a classroom. Like I think getting your hands deep in the Google (laughs) really helps (laughs) figuring out how to do things like you and I both know this for sure. Like I say, I always go to the University of Google. So (laughs) if you don't have the background, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. Right. So we see lots of marketing tips floating around online these days. And I know you have recently started a hashtag over on Instagram, Farm Marketing Friday. As someone who's been doing this for a while, how can we tell the good from the bad? Oh, well, many online marketing tips you find out there, they hover around things like the day-to-day type of hacks. You know, they'll provide this blip of insight, but that's really all it is. It's just a blip. You're still left obsessing over things like vanity metrics, follower count, likes per post, right? I mean, we've both suffered from that ourselves. And you begin feeling like you're failing somewhere because this little blip of a tip didn't actually change anything for you. And that's the issue with most of the free online marketing advice you find out there today. It's just frosting. You know, it's sugar-coated insights that don't move the needle for your farming business. In an hour or two, they leave you with a sugar crash. You're just craving more useless tips. And what you do need is a deep, comprehensive strategy that's going to give you an actionable framework that you can use across the whole online marketing spectrum from Facebook to Instagram to email marketing and beyond. You need tips that are going to bring sharp and focused clarity on how to use social media to your farm's benefit to make money because... Follower counts and likes don't pay for your mortgage. And what's more, the free information out there on marketing, most of it, it's written by people who've never cleaned poop out of a chicken coop or dewormed a new. <laughs> you know, like these bloggers and marketers, they don't juggle a day job and run a farm business. Not to mention, you know, the bazillion other hats we farmers wear, vet, accountant, mechanic, chemist, you know. So the tips that I share with Farm Marketing Friday come from someone who is a marketer and a farmer. I know what it's like to lose an entire flock of layers to a predator, then have to turn around, put on a good face, and give a farm tour to a group of potential customers. 
<laughs> you know, I, it, I know how it feels to hightail it from the barn to, sh- to the shower, covered in manure, to clean up in under five minutes to make it in time for a friend's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag life of a farmer. Yeah, right? <laughs> seriously. So where do you think farmers who sell direct to consumers are missing the ball when it comes to online marketing? What are some of the blind spots that you see or areas that need work? Well, we just mentioned vanity metrics like follower count. This was my tip a few weeks ago, but I'll share it here. Uh, For those of us farmers and ranchers who use Instagram, we all at one point get super hung up on follower count. I want to share a big old mindset shift for you when it comes to follower count, or as I like to call it, vanity metric patient zero. You have to stop defining your time on the Instagram app as building a following. And instead, you need to shift it to building your customer base. Okay, so think of it this way. Say you're the only farmer at a farmer's market that is guaranteed to get 20,000 random visitors. That's super exciting, right? So you get your booth set up with all your products. You've got grass-fed beef, handmade soap, kombucha, pastured eggs, gorgeous seasonal veggies. Every single visitor at this farmer's market stops at your booth. They take up your time chatting with you, they eat your free samples, they complain about your prices, and not a single one of them purchases from you. You leave feeling spent, taken advantage of, and bitter about the whole experience. Okay, so now let's play this scenario out the right way. Let's say that you have carefully selected 150 people to attend the same event. These are people you've taken the concentrated time to understand target, and reach out to. You've set your booth up for these 150 people and every single one of them purchases something from you because they are your ideal customer, not just a random person perusing the app. At the end of the day, you've walked away with money in your pocket, giving life to your farm business. So that is the difference between building a following and building a customer base. I would much rather have 150 paying customers than 20,000 random followers. How about you, Caitlin? Preach, girl, friend. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Kelsey and I have spent many hours talking about the vanity metrics of Instagram and social media as a whole. And it is just, I feel like once you get over that It's just so freeing. You just let it go. And it's just like, it's the app is actually used for what it's meant for. First of all, building a community of like minded people and being in community with people. And also, like, if you are trying to sell something through there, you're talking to the right people and not just screaming out loud, hoping somebody hears you. Yeah, it turns your transaction to a relationship. And that's what you want when you're carefully targeting and selecting those people instead of just trying to pander to the masses. Absolutely. What do you think another blind spot you see with farmers selling direct to consumers is? Well, definitely not having, so not having a farm website with proper SEO. And SEO, that stands for search engine optimization, meaning that you're using the correct words and pictures so search engines like Google can find you. So an example being, if you're a grass-fed beef farmer selling in the lacrosse area, you must include the words your perfect customer would use to search for you if they typed it into Google. So think like uh, driftless grass-fed beef farm or lacrosse pastured beef or southwestern Wisconsin grass-fed whole or half cow. And it sounds weird and kind of like like stop and start when you say it out loud, but these are called keywords and you have to incorporate them into your website because that's how we search things on Google, right? Without those keywords, Google has no idea what you offer or do, thus potential customers can never find you. So you have to put yourself in your perfect customer's shoes and write down the words you think they'd use to Google around for you. Then use those words all over your website. Use them on your homepage. Use them on your about page. Use them on your store page everywhere. Don't make it look like gibberish. Obviously, you're going to want to write out complete sentences, but be sure you're using those keywords. The other thing that scares me is how many new farmers just plain old overlook having a website in general. Like they feel they can get by with just a Facebook page or just an Instagram account. And I am all for pacing yourself as you launch your business, but not having a website is the single biggest mistake you could make as a beginner farmer looking to sell your produce or products. 
So, and this, this last tip is a bit of an anecdote and it ties into having a website. So I was sitting in a coffee shop in Milwaukee with my friend Becca and she sat down in a huff and she like threw up her hands and she says to me, I spent a solid hour researching online for local farms that sell pastured whole chicken this morning. And I came up completely short. All of their websites were so out of date. They didn't include any info on how they raised their chickens, or they literally didn't even have a website. Like I could find them on Google Maps, but then they never had a website. Like, how do you expect me to email you or call you or let alone pay you if your website isn't even accurate? Okay. So the thing was, I knew that there were at least four farms local to me that sold pastured whole chicken, but that's because I'm a farmer and I've networked with these other farmers. So I decided to put on my consumer hat and I got online to see what I could find. Caitlin, the results were abysmal. Some had websites that looked like they were born on the first computer ever to see the internet. (laughs) (laughs) And some had absolutely no pictures. Like you couldn't even see what they were doing on their farm. Or some of them didn't even have an about me page. And none of them had a place to opt in and stay updated on what's happening on the farm. So I was frustrated for Becca, but I was also so heartsick for these farmers who were missing out on their perfect customer. Okay, so listen, we lovers of the land, we work hard. I can see why getting a solid online presence going can feel like a non-starter when you're mucking barns, planting cover crops, racing to keep up with harvesting. But when I put myself in my friend's shoes, I completely saw her point. If I hear about an interesting company or organization passing conversation, I immediately turn to the web and on my phone and I'll research them. I want to view their products. I want to look at their about page. And if their website is haphazard, doesn't have the info I need, or it hasn't been updated in months, I will pull a faster exit than when an angry sow makes to break my legs against a fence. And I know I'm not the only one who does this. I mean, Caitlin, how did you make your last five purchases? Was it online? Was it in person? Honestly, if it wasn't like piping hot, delicious coffee that was put in my hand or food from the grocery store. I am definitely an online consumer through and through. And even saying that, I order things like food and coffee online too. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly how I operate. So we live in a time now where people learn about companies online, experience their branding on social media, grow to trust them based on their online presence, and then ultimately purchase their products on the internet. And ultimately, your farm is no different. Consumers have evolved with the rise of the internet, and farmers have to do the same. Without a strong online presence, potential buyers are going to pass us by, or they're going to feel frustrated. This is exactly where we as farmers are failing our perfect customers. So if you sell or are planning on selling direct to consumer, you cannot overlook the importance of having an up-to-date, user-friendly website. Absolutely. And like we mentioned before, it's a lot of work in the beginning, but the payoff is obviously worth it. Yes, yes. Have you been loving the Rural Woman podcast? Are you wondering how you can support the show? Well, friend, I'm happy to announce that I've recently joined Patreon. What is Patreon? Well, it's a membership-based platform that provides a simple way for you to contribute to the Rural Woman podcast every month and get exclusive rewards in return. Memberships start as low as $2 a month. Seriously, that's less than your grande, skinny, extra hot caramel macchiato with whip. Wondering what the rewards are? Well, they include promo codes for Shop Wild Rose Farmer, draws for the Rural Woman podcast merchandise, shout outs on the show, and more. Your financial support of the Rural Woman podcast will help make it possible for the stories of women in agriculture to continue to be shared. So head on over to wildrosefarmer.com to find out more information about how you can become a patron through Patreon. So Kelsey, with all of this knowledge being spewed into our ears... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from your years and years of experience with this and your Googling and all of the prior work that you've done to this, you've developed an extremely helpful tool to help farmers, ranchers, and homesteaders get their names and products out onto the World Wide Web. Can you tell us more about the Cultivating Capital course that you recently launched and what it's all about? 
Yes, I would love to. So I started sharing my farming and homesteading journey on Instagram the spring of 2017, which almost immediately I had farmers asking me how I built my website, how I was drafting blog posts, how I use social media platforms like Instagram and Pinterest. So of course, answering those questions took more than a simple email message. And I knew that, but I would still try to do my best to help. And it wasn't until I was on a coaching call with another farmer, I was helping her with getting her farm stand open when she just stopped in the middle of the conversation and said to me, honestly, I just wish you could sit me down and show me how you do all your online marketing stuff. That's all I really want. (laughs) And She goes on to say, she's like, there's so much info out there on how to farm and how to homestead, but there's nothing out there that's tailored specifically to farmers about how to use marketing to make money. Truly, all I want to know is how you make your farm business profitable. So her words, they hit me like a ton of bricks. And then it just all clicked into place. I could use all the skills I already have. And I could create a resource for farmers to solve this problem. I could be in the room with her. I could show her exactly how I use online marketing, taking all the guesswork out of where to start and what to use. I knew how to make online courses thanks to our first business. So why not develop an entire curriculum that shares the strategy that I use? So the first thing I did is I surveyed all the farmers I knew. Some of your listeners may remember the survey I did it on IG and I just asked point blank, like, what do you like about using Facebook for your farm? Or do you not like using Facebook for your farm? Why? Do you know how to use Pinterest for your farm? Do you want to learn how? And I ended up surveying over 100 farmers from all different walks of life, all different types of agribusinesses. And once I knew what everyone's pain points were, I built the course. But I wasn't satisfied with just releasing the course point blank. I wanted to be sure it actually worked for farmers. So back in July of 2019, I had a group of 27 farmers beta test the first draft of the course. And oh my gosh, we had so much fun. I put together a private Facebook group. So we had a central place to communicate, share feedback and ask questions, which I ended up loving the Facebook group so much. I decided to do the private group also for the official course for students when they enroll. So After the beta testers got through it, I took their feedback to heart and I made some minor changes. Then I officially launched the course on December 6th of 2019, and I was just overjoyed and overwhelmed with the amount of enrollments. We had over 70 the first month. So a valuable aspect of the course is that I'm active daily in our Facebook group, answering questions and troubleshooting with farmers as they work through the course. And I knew I was not going to be able to keep putting my students first if I kept having 70 farmers enroll every month. So now I only open up 30 course spots every month. And that way I can spend a good amount of time with each student who enrolls. That is incredible. And I'm so glad that you had that person that you were coaching. I know, right? Light that up for you, right? Like, she's right. Like if you could just come and sit in my office and help me do all of these things, like that would be perfect. But obviously you can't be here all of the time helping me. So (laughs) building this course is a perfect idea. So Kelsey, who was this course made for? So the course was made for you. If you have a farm, farm brand or homestead, and you want to make money doing any of the following things, you sell shippable farm products, like fertilized hatching eggs, t-shirts, seeds, bare root trees, farm brand merchandise, soap, candles, yarn, etc. Or you sell produce, meat, and value-added products at a farmer's market, roadside farm stand, or farm store. The course is also for you if you sell direct-to-consumer CSA shares or shares of beef, pork, or poultry. The course is great if you book on-farm events like dinners, pizza nights, or concerts, or if you even do on-farm weddings, like at a rustic barn or farm venue. And then also if you book farm stays and do agro-tourism through websites like Airbnb and VRBO. And let me add, I've had a couple people reach out who haven't gotten officially started with farming just yet, but they're like super curious about the course. So I want to say that this course gets you going with your best marketing foot forward, which is huge if you're dreaming if you're dreaming of getting started with farming or homesteading, because it's going to help you create a solid plan before you dive in with all the farming stuff. So if you fall into any of these categories and you want to start earning a consistent profit and build your customer base using online marketing, the Cultivating Capital course is perfect for you. So I designed this course specifically to provide to provide ample examples on how to successfully market all of the scenarios I just listed across Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, as well as with blogging and email marketing. Can you briefly then walk us through each of these modules that are in the course? Absolutely. So the Cultivating Capital course has 12 modules that build on each other. The front end of the course focuses on business planning, 
profit mapping and breaking through psychological barriers so you can work towards a truly profitable farm. So module one is a 15 minute video. It comes with worksheets and it includes the single most powerful thing you can do to ensure your farm success. You ultimately learn the secret to building an unbreakable foundation for your farm business. Module two is another 15 minute video and you learn how to define your perfect customer and you learn where to find them. So you understand and identify your farm's perfect customer, and then you figure out how to find them online and then also out in your local area. And you can do these things completely for free, mind you. Module three is all about selling. Learn how to heal your money mindset and get over the fear of selling your farm's products. So in that module, you explore your relationship with money, you unearth your limiting beliefs that you may hold around deserving things like wealth and abundance, and you discover how to rethink the way you promote your farm's products and you ultimately demystify the act of selling. Module four comes with a 20 minute video. It's all about metrics. We cut through the social media white noise and discover the only online marketing metric that matters, which includes a complete detailed and actionable goal setting from a financial perspective, as well as a social media perspective. And then I share my own personal metrics, talk all the monies with you across social media platforms using online marketing. And then I also share case studies of others' metrics. And then I also talk about what a healthy conversion rate looks like for your farm. Module five is a 50 minute video. And in that one, we learn how to create breathtaking branding that sets your farm apart and makes customers instantly love you. So I do a step-by-step branding tutorial with different types of examples. I do branding creation, like using Canva and other resources. And then I also share some affordable branding pros if you want to outsource. In module six, we go over website creation. So this is a three hour tutorial and video, including worksheets. And I show you how to build and maintain a website for your farm that keeps customers engaged and willing to spend their money on you. So I show you how to do website creation on Weebly and Grace cart. I teach you how to launch your blog and I show you how to implement an online shopping cart for seamless sales experiences. Then we go over how to use that, utilize Google analytics for free. And then we implement a bunch of SEO hacks that work wonders for the Google algorithm. So you don't have to pay for Google ads. Module seven is all about email marketing. So that one is a two hour video tutorial, and we put together an email list for your farm that turns website visitors into loyal customers. So I take you through all the email marketing platforms that are out there and which ones are the best options and why. Then I do start to finish email marketing tutorials for you. We learn how to set up an email opt-in, how to create automated email sales funnels. And then I share with you what email marketing list practices are. Module eight is all about Facebook, and that is another two-hour video, and I teach you how to correctly use Facebook to raise awareness for your farm and easily drive sales. So in that one, I teach you how to set up your Facebook shop and integrate it with an existing shopping cart. I show you how to run effective Facebook ads that are affordable and actually get results. Then I'll go through and do a tutorial on case studies on setting up ads on Facebook. I take you through almost every scenario I shared, like if you're setting up Facebook ads for a farm stay or shippable farm product, everything. Then I go over best practices for Facebook, things you need to know when it comes to the algorithm. Module nine is all about Instagram. We learn how to redefine your relationship with Instagram so that you can build community as well as make money. So in that one, I show you how to set up an Instagram strategy that increases engagement and builds community. We also go through some story hacks that help you increase farm product sales. I teach you how to get beautiful pictures for your feed for free. I show you how to draft the perfect caption. Then... There's module 10, which is the Pinterest module. In that one, we go over why Pinterest is a surprisingly successful and profitable platform for farmers and how you can cash in. So I teach you how to rethink the way you can use Pinterest for your farm. And then I do some start to finish tutorials on creating the perfect pin for your website that has the potential to go viral. I've had a handful of pins go viral now, so it's been really fun experimenting and then sharing that information with others. And then I also share the best kept secret productivity apps for Pinterest because there's a ton that people don't know about. Module seven is all about synergy. So with that one, I show you how to set up an online marketing plan for your farm that runs itself and requires minimal time and effort so that you can get back to doing what you love, farming. So this one includes a comprehensive overview on how all the social media platforms work together to drive sales for your farm. And then I share with you what a typical day looks like for me with successful online marketing. And then finally, we go over how to read and understand your metrics so that you can make changes to your system if need be. Then the last module, module 12, is all about mindset. And it's basically just me sitting in my barn answering questions that all the students have asked. (laughs) 
<laughs> and so like the chickens come in and out and I just talk about like work-life balance and share my experience using the system for my own businesses. A little bit about what I've shared here too on the podcast. That's awesome. I love that this whole course just seems, it's very holistic. It is all about how to start, where you're going, knowing where you're going and why you're doing this. And I think the overview just sounds amazing. It's so great. Thanks, Caitlin. So how long does it typically take to complete your course then? So I recommend taking the course a week at a time. Like for the get down to it type of farmer, you can t- it could take you 12 weeks. But typically what I've seen from farmers who take it is it it usually takes about six months to implement everything, which is fine. It's important to note that you can take the course at your own pace. Like once you enroll in the course, you have lifetime access and you can work through the modules whenever you have time, which I know can be few and far between during the growing season, which is ultimately why I launched the course during the winter, because I know things are a bit slower this time of year. And a lot of the farmers who jumped right in are just like so excited and getting down to it. But yeah, you can take the course at your own pace ultimately. That's very cool. And what are some of the biggest takeaways that your current users and the beta testers took from the course? The biggest takeaway is that hope is really not a strategy when it comes to online marketing for your farm. The beta testers were just blown away by how everything fits together within the system I teach, and they're all so excited to implement it. It's truly my favorite part of teaching. It's that aha moment when they finally understand how it all works. The other aspect of the course that beta testers and current users are blown away by was how much their money mindset hinders them from taking risks or even making concrete plans for their farm business. So in module three, I teach farmers how to get over that fear of selling, but we also dive really deep into the psychology behind our fear of selling and ultimately work through that fear. It's another really big light bulb moment moment for farmers who take the course. So lastly, One of the big light bulb moments was how powerful Facebook is. So many people write it off, but it is our most profitable driver of high quality customers for our farm. And the trick is you have to use it correctly to make that happen. Facebook has so many features for business owners that many just aren't aware of. And lucky for you, I'm a nerd about all of them and I share them all with you in the course. (laughs) So the beta testers were really vocal about their distaste for Facebook at first, but then they took that module. They're all like, whoa, when they learned what it could do for their farms, if they just took the time to learn how to use it, which is what I do. I teach them how to use it in that module. That's awesome. Kelsey, the big question, the elephant in the room that I am sure is on other people's minds, not only mine, about hearing (laughs) how awesome your course is and all of the wonderful things that you teach us. And basically, like it's the cure all and be all for online marketing for your farm. How much does it cost? So the course is $197, which comes out to about $16 per module. I've been told by multiple farmers that I don't charge enough for the course because the value that they've gotten out of it is immense. I just had one flower farmer messaged me uh, the other day, and she sold out her flower arranging workshop using the skills I teach in the course and made over $400 in profit. She made back her investment in the course in less than two months. Like These are the types of stories I love hearing. <laughs> Uh, I have to agree with the other farmers that told you that you're not charging enough for it. Because Aww. when you break it down to $16 per module, and I just think about all of the time and effort it took you to get to where you are today, like people should be paying you millions for this info. <laughs> you're, that's very sweet to say. I I understand the audience that that we're working with, and we don't have a lot of money when we're starting out as farmers. So I've been very sensitive to that in the pricing of the course. And truly at this point, like any any value that's added to the course, the price will incrementally increase. And I'll never be ever offering a discount on the course. So 197 it is. Well, that's a discount in itself. So thank you for that, Kelsey. (laughs) You're very sweet. You're welcome. So where can the listeners learn more and sign up for the course? Yes. So you can head over to my website, www.greenwillowhomestead.com slash courses, or you can just Google the Cultivating Capital course and it'll pop right up. That'll bring you to the course's main page where you can read more about the course and then ultimately get enrolled. That's awesome. And I will drop a link in the show notes so people can find it. And uh, I will also link all of your social media stuff in the show notes as well. So people can find you and connect with you. And if they have any questions, they can ask you. And I know that you're more than willing to answer them for them. Yes, absolutely. Kelsey, my last question for you. If you could 
go back and give young entrepreneurial Kelsey one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh my gosh. So, so many things like rush to my mind. But first I have to say, I wish I could tell her to have patience and it's okay to share what you've experienced and learned. I used to have such a scarcity mindset about this stuff. I was so impatient to see success. And then when I did experience success initially, I was so scared that if I opened up about it and shared it, I was somehow making others feel small. Or I was scared that in giving away the hard-won knowledge I'd earned, it somehow diminished my own success, which is just ridiculous. You know, after college, I was working on my photography business. I was such a miser on investing in myself. I refused to go to workshops or take courses because I just had that scarcity mindset. So for the last few years, as our businesses have blossomed and I worked on my scarcity mindset, I've done a complete 180 and I just started investing in myself and my businesses, educating myself, bettering myself, going to camps, going to conventions, and ultimately just getting out of my own way, you know? And I... I think we all know like we should invest in ourselves, but when the opportunity arrives, we worry first that we won't get the value out of it, or second, we somehow won't measure up to the investment. So I wish that I could go back and tell young entrepreneurial Kelsey she's worth the $25 book, she's worth the $500 retreat, or the $1,000 convention ticket, you know? So ultimately... What I've realized, and I wish I could tell myself all those years ago, is that my success does not diminish or prevent someone else's success. And someone else's success doesn't prevent or diminish mine. If you experience success online as a farmer, we all win. We have to see each other as comrades, not competition. And I wish I wouldn't have, and I wish that I would have started teaching this stuff years ago. That's awesome. Kelsey, you are incredible. Oh, you're so sweet, Caitlin. Thank you. (laughs) You are just the best and so multi-talented. And I just love you to bits. Well, the feeling is mutual. Good. Well, I I love you right back. Yes, yes. So I am so happy that this course is out in the world. And if the listeners, listeners, just go go look it up. Go talk to Kelsey if this is something (laughs) that's been on your mind and you've been thinking about it. Honestly, just go ahead and do it because like Kelsey said, you're worth it. And I think this course will not only help myself, but it's going to help a lot of other people too. So thank you for putting so much time and effort into it. Thank you, Caitlin. Those words mean a lot. Thanks for listening to the Rural Woman Podcast. For show notes, head on over to wildrosefarmer.com. You can stay connected with me on Instagram at Wild Rose Farmer. If you love the show, make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Plus, share it with a friend. We'll see you next time.